Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on Friday the 29th of October. Today it's the lesser festival of James Hannington and he died this day in 1885. He was the first Anglican Bishop of Africa. After dabbling in his father's department store business and being a volunteer for the artillery corps, he decided on a clerical career aged um, 21. After being ordained priest and working in Devon for a while, he volunteered for missionary work in East Africa. He originally left England in 1882, but he was soon struck down by dysentery and had to return to England just a year later. After being consecrated as a bishop of the Easter Equatorial Africa in 1885, he returned to Africa, to Kenya, just outside Mombasa. Here, he pioneered a shorter and healthier highland road to Buganda using Christian porters and undercutting the Arab slave route. This had huge political consequences that Hannington was unaware of at the time. The work on the road was ordered to be stopped, but Hannington refused and completed the road, reaching the relative safety of Lake Victoria. However, he and his team were captured by order of the chiefs of Bazoga, and after eight days, the Christian porters were killed. And on the 29th of October, 1885, Hannington himself was speared in both sides. As he died, his alleged words were to the soldiers who killed him, go, tell Mwanga, I have purchased the road to Uganda with my blood. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm today is Psalm number 19, and it's been written by David. It considers the glory of God in creation and moves to reflect on the character and use of the law of the Lord. David begins by referring to the heavens and the sky as proofs of God's creative work. He continues to describe the wonder of the day and the night and as further proof of God's magnificent creation before moving on for what God means to mankind. Finally, David ends with a prayer asking for deliverance from the grasp of sins. So this is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their worlds to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statues of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. 
the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, the honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, is keeping them there is a great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of my transgression. May these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Micah 5, and we're going to read from verse 2 uh, through to the end. This reading is one of the prophecies of Micah, and it is set at a time when the Assyrians were a major threat. So Micah 5, starting from verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be the ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old and ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. When the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses, we will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders. Who will rule the land of Assyria with the sword, the land of Nimrod, with drawn sword? He will deliver us from the Assyrians when they invade our land and march across our borders. The remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of many peoples, like the dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass, which do not wait for anyone or depend on man. The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, which mauls and mangles as it goes, and no one can rescue. Your hand will be lifted up in triumph over your enemies, and all your foes will be destroyed. In that day, declares the Lord, I will destroy your horses from among you and demolish your chariots. I will destroy the cities of your land and tear down all your strongholds. I will destroy your witchcraft and you will no longer cast spells. I will destroy your idols and your sacred stones from among you. You will no longer bow down to the work of your hands. I will uproot from among you your Asherah poles when I demolish your cities. I will take vengeance in anger and wrath on the nations that have not obeyed me. Now for the canticle. Uh, this one's based on Isaiah uh, 55 verses six to 11. Return to the Lord who will have mercy to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy to our God, who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. 
so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish what I, of which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy to our God, who will richly pardon. Our Gospel reading today is from John 18, and I shall be reading from verse 2 through to verse 27. So this is from the Gospel of John, and he is nearing the death of Jesus. We see a critical component in the journey of Jesus to the cross. Judas Isricot has betrayed Jesus, and now in this reading we hear how Peter denies Jesus, not once, but three times, the three times that Jesus predicted he would. So John 18, verse 2, 3 to 27. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Cepheus, the high priest that year. Cepheus was one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty, and he, she brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire that they'd made to keep warm. Peter was also standing with them, warning him, warming himself. And the high priest questioned Jesus. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Cepheus, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. The Gospel Canticle today is Glory and Honour, and it is based on verses from Revelation. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God, saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever.
Now let's pray for our world. Almighty God, we thank you that your word continues to inspire us, showing us who you are, how you love us, and how we should live. Thank you for the way in which the Bible brings guidance. Faithful God, we pray for Christians throughout the world, and particularly for those who are persecuted because of their faith in you. We ask for your protection for them and strength and guidance for all individuals and organizations that seek to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you that you care for the entire world and all of its people. And we pray for all countries that are torn apart by conflict, illness and hunger. We pray for a successful COP26 climate summit. Please be with the world leaders, encouraging them to take appropriate actions to save the earth you so wonderfully made for us. Help us all to do our part to be better stewards of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all children, teachers and staff at schools in our parishes and ask that they will be refreshed by the half-term holiday. In a moment of silence, please pray for any aspect of life in your local community that is on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the sick, the lonely in our communities and all who care for them. Bring healing and comfort to people around the world suffering from COVID-19. Speed their recovery and slow the spread of the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to be with us in all that we do today, that we may serve you by serving other people. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The collect for today. Most merciful God, who strengthened your church by the steadfast courage of your martyr, James Hannington, grant that we also, thankfully remembering his victory of faith, may overcome what is evil and glorify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me again this morning for morning prayer and I will see you again in a fortnight's time. Next Friday it will be Reverend Sarah with you.